The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Exolix, a privacy-focused, non-custodial, instant crypto exchange. Go to exolix.com to enjoy secure and completely anonymous swaps with no KYC or sign-up. Swap between Monero and 2,000-plus assets at the most competitive rates and with no limits. Exolix.com, your fast and secure way to privacy. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. We got the Monero price right in front of us. So you can notice that um, yeah, it's been pretty a pretty calm week. We've had a little bit of mild movement to the upside. We basically turned these uh, these wicks into more of a stable stable price and go figure. Right at 150. Currently, you know, looking like maybe maybe do we want to try and and bust out back to the top side here? That's that's obviously what we would like to see. Um, what I would really like to see. So it took us maybe mm, that looks like about two weeks to me where um you know we had that crash our, our last crash that happened um, i can't remember what drove this one in august uh, but anyways yeah we crashed down for a moment took about two weeks and then we we came back towards the upside so it would be cool if we crashed down here and then presently in the next day or so start making our way back up that would effectively imply that we have demand that um because crack and delisting across the entire eu that was a pretty big deal in terms of the news cycle right in terms of the hype um, so for us to crash down and quickly recover the price uh, even more quickly than, than back here, that kind of speaks to the power to, to, to the volume buying that's happening. That people are like, nope, they don't care. If Monero crashes, everyone's happy because they're just going to buy more. And, uh, and the liquidity's got to be low enough on these exchanges that it forces the price back up. So currently stable coin price is 150. Um, there will come a time this will get revaluated and our stable coin our stable coin price will eventually sit something closer to the 250-500 area. It's anyone's guess as to exactly when that happens, but some, you know, probably something about the next liquidity expansion um, will be that moment that that happens. So uh, you can see we've still got our price predictions here going, looking forward to Monerotopia in about a month. Um, I called 182, I guess, because I'm a negative Nancy. I'm just not bullish enough. Um, Tux coming in with prices right rules just to defeat me at 187 it looks like and then Doug uh called for 202 which would have been like a big wick back here. So um yeah, uh I guess everything looking pretty stable, pretty normal here on the Monero versus US dollar price. Uh, as far as related to Bitcoin, yeah, we had that big we had the big fall off, you know, obviously same deal crack and delisting and we've kind of been moving towards the upside here. Um, later we'll look at Bitcoin and you'll see that it has actually been falling just a little bit itself. So, uh, cryptocurrency has been, eh, I don't want to say languishing, but probably languishing is right. There's just nothing happening. Maybe a little bit of downward action. Um, yeah, we, uh, nothing else. Oh, you know what? Let's look at the Bitcoin or sorry, Monero versus Ethereum price. Um, yeah, so we, we basically, we are now solidly back inside of the very large standard deviation area, uh, Ethereum Overall, as a coin, has not been performing anything uh, impressive, nothing that you would look at and, and write, home, uh, write home about. So, yeah, we've basically gotten back into the, into the large standard deviation structure. Maybe we can expand this chart just a little bit, make it slightly easier to see. Yeah. Okay, so we're on the three-day chart. You can look down here at the bottom for your reference of time, 2022. Uh, right here, let's even zoom more. Okay, so yeah, you can see there's the standard deviation structure from Monero, Monero versus Ethereum. You'll notice that the bands widened as Monero price dropped down. That's that's classic Bollinger Band, as it's called. I don't know why the dude had to call it Bollinger Bands, you know, just to sound cool or something, um, rather than standard deviations, whatever. Anyways, um, we are now back solidly in that lower standard deviation. You'll notice it's starting to curl flat there. Um, that's That's a good sign. Um, you know, and I, I do wonder in terms of when the liquidity expansion kicks off, probably Monero should go up with the rest of the market this time. We'll have to see. Maybe they've still got tricks up their sleeve. Certainly they do. But for the moment, this looks like a good stabilization on a long-term basis uh, in terms of, you know, okay, we had, we had the dropout and then now things have basically come back. You'll really, what you'll notice is that at that peak here, that's effectively our pre-crash price versus Ethereum. So, um, I mean, what you really want to see is some stabilization and then moving towards the upside of that band. If you want to say that that Monero is going to really start outperforming Ethereum for the long term, there will probably come a day that that does happen. I have no predictions for you here today on whether that is sooner or later. So, um, yeah, with that, that's probably most of the Monero price, Monero versus gold. Nothing really changed here. Um, gold still strong, still doing pretty well. 
Um, looking at our overall stable coins, we got Xano here, always uh, in the top left quadrant, number one for us, I guess, apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, so we still have this kind of pennant formation hanging out at the top of that pennant. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. It, it does suggest slightly more strength than uh, than weakness. Mm, you really, you know, you really kind of think that, hey, you, you kind of want to um, test one more time if you're going to like try to go to the upside here. I mean, it, things can just break out for no reason at all, right? But let's just go ahead and draw a splitter there and do some dubious technical analysis. Um, so you can see we've got the splitter right there, and, and the splitter is kind of a useful metric for you because it often gives you a good place to look. Um, if, like in this case, if this coin is going to be bullish, you would want to see it do something like maybe test that splitter there, you know, kind of do this, maybe make a wick above, right? Maybe test the splitter again and do something like that, and that's that's usually like... Good price action. That's totally hypothetical. Just kind of giving you guys a feel for things you might look for if you're if you're trying to get a, a coin that's that's about to break out that you think is you know setting up to to break out to the top side. Um, it doesn't always play out like that, but you know. Anyways, uh, Firo. I don't know if I've been mispronouncing it. I call it Firo. Maybe I've just got a weird accent or something. Yeah, this thing is still consolidating. At this point, you would almost even um, try and draw some lines that look like this. Let's get rid of the dots. Yeah, you would try and draw some line that looks something like that, right? So um, this technical pattern doesn't necessarily tell you that it's going to go up or down. Um, it's really just a, a narrowing volatility pattern. Um, probably this thing will go the direction the rest of the market goes. So if the rest of the market breaks down, it too will break down. If the market starts pumping, then, then Firo will start going to, towards the upside as well. Pirate chain, nothing has changed here. Lots of oscillation. Um, that would be funny if, if this oscillation started dying down. <laughs> that would probably mean that one of you chads out there that was listening was like, yeah, let me just trade the oscillations, um, which would have the tendency to dampen the oscillations, uh, especially if you were leveraging it for all of the uh, for all the liquidity that was available there. Uh, let's see, Darrow just stepping, stair-stepping to the downside, the, the inevitable march towards death. I can't see how Darrow is going to be relevant at all ever again, uh, but okay, whatever. Uh, and then Zcash, wow, pumping. Okay, Zcash, Zuku, have you been shilling hard lately? Maybe it was Barry Silbert, who knows? Um, but yeah, they just pumped 50% in the past, uh, what does that look like, about eight days, week and a half maybe? Um, yeah. So uh, I guess uh, Zcash, good on you guys, trying to show some strength, whatever. Um, I don't think we believe you that much, but, you know, why not? Okay, going towards the uh, towards the broader analysis, starting with Bitcoin, obviously. Like we said, languishing is going on here, basically. Um, and that's kind of the story for the whole week. Nothing really changed from this week to last week. It's kind of like um, things sort of just leveled off in a holding pattern. And, and I guess that makes sense. Um, you know, if you're... I don't believe the election theater that much, but, you know, they, they do play theater. It is a theater, right? So on the one side, they've got to do certain things because they're doing the actions, and then they get they got to do the same thing on the other side. And there's a lot of true believers in the theater that think it's actually real life. Okay, whatever. From the context of the theater, if you're a Democrat, um, if you're the, the current uh, administration, you really want to hold the markets level uh, and steady until the election, if you can, right? You, you, don't, want, you don't want things to the bottom to just fall out. Um, at least if you wait until after the election, you can say, oh, the nation is panicking because the e monster is getting elected, right? Like, because they know they're going to lose. Like, Trump's going to win, guys. Like, I think everybody's starting to, this is starting, they're starting to realize this, which we knew immediately when the fake assassination attempt happened. And uh, he said, no, this is this is the anointing by God of Trump to be, you know, to lead America back to greatness, of course, obviously. Um, oh, and by the way, they listen, when the CIA wants you dead, they put two, three backup shooters behind the patsy to make sure that the job is done. Oh, and if he really was a threat and they really needed to take him out, they would have just heart attacked him or they would, you know, they would have given him some. They could have done something far more covert that would be less inflammatory for the nation and eliminate the problem. Right. That's like so Rice. Have you ever watched Breaking Bad? Yeah, yeah, there exactly right. <laughs> it, there's any number of things they could have done to just take this guy out if he was really a threat, and they would have done it, and it wouldn't have been with the uproar of of everyone else being like, "Hey, we now we have to fight, fight, fight!" Right? Like that wouldn't that that's just too it's too theatrical. It was just too much. And the more I thought about it, I'm like, no, that's not how the CIA operates. Look at every freaking assassination. There's always a second shooter, a third shooter, magical bullets, right? Like from the Vegas shooting to John F. Kennedy, it's just always been like that. So. That they wouldn't have missed. There would have just been some oddities about, you know, some magic bullets, maybe. 
Um, so, which means that it was intentional. They wanted that theater to happen. So anyways, Trump is the win guys. Like just go bet on it. You probably make money. I'll thank me later. Um, okay. So anyways, Bitcoin is languishing here. Expect it to continue languishing. I don't see any reason why Bitcoin should suddenly break towards the top side here. Um, there's actually a thing that happened interesting this past week. Um, the Supreme court declined to hear a case about selling 69,000 Bitcoin. So it was, um, there was like a California, I think it was a California court that had ordered the sale, or maybe it was like the Ninth Circuit. I don't remember which numbers of circuits correspond to which states um, or areas. Anyways, um, they had ordered the sale of 69,000 Bitcoin. Um, maybe it was, I think it was the Silk Road Bitcoin. I'm not totally sure there. But anyways, it was 69,000 Bitcoin. Um, great number uh, for Bitcoin and Elon Musk. Uh, and so there was an appeal that was going to go to the to the Supreme Court that says, no, you can't sell these Bitcoin for, I don't know, whatever reasons. The Supreme Court declined to hear that case in their upcoming round of cases, um, which means that basically that Bitcoin can now be sold. So it, it's an open question of will it get sold? Because if Trump's going to win, um, you know, then maybe he'll follow up on that whole strategic reserve and, you know, transferring those to the Treasury Department, which would be, I mean, no matter how you slice it, that's a win for for Bitcoin bros. That's a win for some some of their predictions about you know the integration of Bitcoin into the system, which also doesn't surprise us in the slightest because we're like, yeah, of course they'll in, of course they want to integrate that into their system, right? Like it's completely they want Daddy Trump to give them the fake pump. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great way to put it. Oh man, um, yeah, put that in your journal, guys, and and read it tomorrow. Um, yeah, so uh, so I don't think that should have any major effect on the price. It would be interesting if the lame duck administration um, sells that shit off quickly, you know, so just to like prevent, you know, kind of as a last F you to, um, to the incoming administration. That, that could definitely happen. Uh, and it would be like maximum entertainment. So I kind of hope it does happen. Um, I'm not sure how much it would really affect the price. Probably not that much, guys. I just kind of be like, oh, but, okay, no big deal, right? It, it wouldn't be a terrible, terrible situation because all of the bullish um, momentum, you know, of of the pro crypto president coming into office would probably mostly offset that uh, that sale. So, and they've got, I mean, plus they've got ways and means, guys. They've got mechanisms to keep the market generally where they want it. Um, they've like they 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 have finely tuned mechanisms to do that kind of thing. Anyways, but the big, big broad picture here is that Bitcoin is still trending along these, uh, effectively the standard deviation um, and our pleb lines, right? So it's it's kind of like um, sort of all of our analysis here from the technical standpoint really does point towards this sort of continued sideways chop for some period of time. Um, I'm expecting that will that will break again with with liquidity um, when the next liquidity expansion happens. It's I mean, again, like we've talked about this, if there's a crash and a subsequent liquidity expansion, um, that's the time to literally take loans and then put your money into high beta, which means high volatility, um, high risk, high reward assets. It's just it's like it's just free money. It's just guaranteed free money, basically. Um, OK, so let's go take a look at some shit coins here. FTT had pumped for a while. Seems like it's pulled back. Um, probably it's still, you know, has I have, you know, we're not going to really look at the US dollar price on FTT, but um the next big winner here would be AVAX. Looks like AVAX has had a good pump here for the last two days. Um, so, yeah, AVAX is... I, I like the idea of AVAX. I'm not sure how much it's going to catch on. It seems like Soul has captured the soul of um, degenerate pump gains, uh, mostly because, you know, it's it's just a meme platform, right? In fact, Soul has taken a lot from Ethereum. Like, Ethereum could have been doing a lot better, except for Soul took a lot of that thunder. Um, and it makes sense, you know, the new thing, the shiny thing. Um, at least one of those usually sticks around. So Sol is the one that is apparently sticking around. Never is there mind. Anything legitimate you know, on Solana? Anything with what? Anything legitimate on Solana? Oh, um, Tether. <laughs> uh, Tether's probably the most legitimate thing on Solana. Also questionable. Uh, <laughs> That's yeah. hilarious. Maybe USDC if we wanted to, if we wanted to try and convince ourselves of something. Um, there's gotta be something, maybe there's like a gold back token from PAX G. I, I really, I haven't really investigated what's actually on Solana. I just know that the meme people, the meme bros are there. So, um, yeah. Um, let's see. AVAX is cool because it's got this, like, uh, this DAG, like DAGs, um, uh, directed a cyclic graph, uh, and it actually apparently works pretty well. They've got all these subnets. Um, they could hypothetically re-implement just about any coin on their network as a subnet um which you know someone said hey we could probably do monero i was like you could but kind of 
you kind of lose the point of of having the the big broad fungibility of the entire network like it's it's a privacy layer and we've seen that privacy layers and protocols will get attacked so your entire network needs to be a privacy protocol itself um yeah but anyways it's an interesting chain it might be scalable um they've got some cool tech whatever i guess um probably though you know pump with the rest of the market in the next in the next um big liquidity expansion because they were to me like soul avax um even ftt to some extent these coins are not OG coins. They came about before the last bull market. They had good performance in the last bull market. And so they've got like they've got this nice sweet spot of where people know what they are and they've got the higher risk, high reward, and people know that. And so that's a lot of money is going to flow there because of that. And, and it performed well last bull market. So there's going to be like decent amount of performance of these coins in the next. Um, there's there's like a very high probability of a decent amount of performance of those coins. The old stuff. Um, for the most part, by and large, the old stuff doesn't like to perform that well. Um, <clears throat> you know, like um, what would be a good example? Litecoin. Litecoin's a good example of old stuff that you really can't expect is going to perform all that well. Um, I mean, yeah, it'll perform, but just relative to what Soul is going to do, it's, you know, or, or AVAX, it's probably not going to do as well. So, sorry, excuse me. So, in, in a relative sense, you want to go for those coins that are new, but not too too new the new stuff obviously has the best chance to gain the most but unless you really know what you're doing unless you really understand the market um, it can be harder to choose to pick the winners of the coins that are you know just a, a year old or two years old so um yeah that's just kind of again some some ranting on how to think about shit coins and, and which ones you want to put your money in um you know put your money in safe shit coins um not not sketchy shit coins man who thought that that would ever um be happening be be said on on the Mineratopia press report eh, anyways uh okay so yeah we've got the bitcoin dominance here it continues to to march up it's actually now um cleanly broken above um it's sort of like a, a very obvious spot that we had from last cycle we could probably drop another horizontal line there and say okay well technically at the moment it, it's kind of occupying that zone um but in general this thing just continues to rise um so like I've said for a while, I don't exactly have great opinions on on where this thing is is ultimately going. Um, that would be how you might try to draw the lines right now. You could say that that this is sort of, you know, the dominance chart is starting to level off just ever so slightly, but there's no reason that, that these top lines have to hold at all. Um, and the other thing, too, is that typically when it's time to kick off the bull market, they will clearly smash Bitcoin towards the upside. Um, to uh, to tell everyone, hey, you can be comfortable now that we've cleanly made new all time highs, and it's time to go. And then everyone's just going to be yoloing everything um, first into Bitcoin, you know, and then and then into crypto. And you'll notice that's that's exactly what happened right here um, in the fall of 2020. So timing wise, four year cycle wise, we're basically at that same moment, you know, right here. We're in the fall of 2020. Um, so it wouldn't even be surprising to watch this thing go to the top side like that. And we'll have to endure for some period of time all the maxis. What, 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 what kind of period of time would this look like? We will have to endure for maybe, oh, wow, 24 weeks. Um, yeah, For maybe half a year, we'll have to listen to the maxis talk about hyper-Bitcoinization again and get them all out of the woodwork. And maybe they're part of the necessary liquidity to just smash the whole market to, towards the upside. But you can bet that you know after some bump to the upside, it'll come back down again. And shit coins will perform for a period of time. It's just you know the cycles. It's the circle of life. The ebbs and flows of cryptocurrency. Oh, okay. Um, I guess it's about all we need to talk here about crypto. Like I said, there's there's really not much to talk about today. Oh, we forgot about Monero transactions. Not that that's really changed much. Um, yeah, twenty five thousand, maybe slightly on the downside of that. So maybe like twenty three thousand on average here for the past week. Looks uh, like Doug maybe trying to come in for an update. Let's see. Hey, Doug, what you, what you got for us? Hey, I uh, just say we we got to remember to judge the memes today oh that's judge. shoot that's right yeah we judge have the meme memes contest going on judge the so memes maybe, that's correct maybe after we get uh zeno Zidu. Up, yeah zenu we could do it after that zeno could even participate if you'd like to be so a yeah, as well zeno's zeno's got his pulse on the uh, on the meme culture i believe yeah yeah exactly if you, if you didn't submit i don't know but yeah just want uh, to yeah. get that word word out on that also, I mean, I think Tony had mentioned it too. The Copa Monero semifinal games tomorrow. Let's just keep talking about that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Semifinals. Tony mentioned it in his news. So. At uh, what time? One p.m. Eastern, I believe. Right. I believe so. Yeah. 
yeah, there'll be two games played back to back. So tune in and once again, spread the word. But yeah, meme ju- meme contest coming up uh, once we have Zeno up on stage nice. after we do the special guest. Awesome. Any comments for body? Let's see. Uh, Secretary Booty Cheek says they met John Bollinger in 2000. I figured Bollinger Bands was just someone's last name. Bollinger, right? Unless this is yeah, a yeah. total troll. Okay, maybe yeah, it's real. That... He seemed too humble to have normal to have named the indicator after himself. It was probably <laughs> someone else's idea. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Maybe, private perhaps. tip super chat four dollars. No comment. Thank you, private tip. Um interesting. Well, nice private, very very private, very generous. Um yeah, I don't know. I thought maybe it was just like his marketing team or something. Who knows? Um, but uh, yeah, we'll cover the macro and then uh, we'll uh, we'll exit stage left. So um, nothing nothing big happened here. We had the dollar index move to the upside a little bit. Um, gold uh, had a little dip and then came back to its uh, basically to its all time high price here over the week. So really, overall no movement there. Um, reverse repos uh, flat. So liquidity basically staying the same. Um, the only thing that I would say here is that uh, U.S. oil um, managed to keep itself inside after like kind of breaking on this line, has kept itself, uh, got back and kept itself up here. Still, though, like that's not good price action, like in terms of, you know, the price of oil. You you typically don't want to see something break down, you know, and then and then do this. Sometimes, you know, that can be like a fake out before it smashes to the upside. But this thing needs to smash to the upside in short order if it's going to prove that it's going to do that. Because otherwise, going down here and then kind of languishing and then breaking back down again, that's um, that's bad price action. Um, but that is the kind of price action that you would use if you're trying to hang on and prevent something from happening. You're like scrapping for every little like, ah, here's here's the break. Nope, nope, nope. It's not quite breaking down. And then like, oh, it's down there. Oh, no, wait, maybe it'll, right? Like that's the kind of, for people that are trying to control assets for social reasons and other reasons, they do those kinds of tricks. You see that kind of like breakdown pattern. Um, so anyways, um, I'm not saying that, you know, well, what I am saying is that if we see oil breakdown, that's again, um, a closer sign of a more imminent um, crash coming up. So at the moment, not, not exactly here yet, but again, you know, the target window here is effectively November to January, right? Like that's our, that's our target window for expecting some kind of big crash right here. That's my highest probability window at the moment. Maybe it doesn't happen that soon. Um, I could be wrong. The crash is, is coming. Like there is some problem coming because, you know, we can look at bonds and we know that, hey, the yield curve is uninverting and uh, Fed has already started lowering rates. Um, they don't have a meeting this month. I think they have another meeting in October. So curious to see what they do next month. Um, although bonds did kind of continue to come back this week. So you, you'll notice that, um, oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. That was last week. Bonds have largely remained flat this week. So again, this week has just been basically no change across the board. Um, there's just really not that much to talk about. Um, I guess we had some, uh, we had some CPI numbers. So inflation numbers, the CPI came down, but the core inflation bumped up, which I thought was interesting. That's actually not a good sign, um, for core inflation to, to have bumped up. Um, that could affect the Fed's decision whether they want to lower rates again or not um, next month. But um, yeah, the CPI came down just a little bit. So I can't remember. One of them leads the other. I felt like I feel like the core inflation tends to be more stable, and then the uh, the CPI will often sort of oscillate around it. So like you'll notice here, the core inflation stayed high, and even though the CPI came down for a little bit, 2015, 2016, it ultimately came back to match um, the core inflation. So um, for the meantime, there is this kind of divergence happening there. Who knows what the Fed will decide that means. Um, yeah, nothing else. Nothing else happened. Let me check my notes here. I thought there might have been. Uh, no, I guess nothing really. Yeah, nothing else really to talk about here today. So, uh, yeah, with that, let's hear what Zeno's got to say. All right. Thank you, as always, Body, for the thank price you, report. Looks like it's been a little bit sideways over the past couple of weeks. Nothing too crazy. Yeah. Imagine it'll get more crazy during the election. The uh, the uh, vote harder, and apparently, if you vote hard enough, you'll make a change election. So, <laughs> I with do that being wonder said, what they've got in store. They might have something in store for us, like entertainment wise, theater wise, as as the election draws close. Hillary Clinton was out there making suggestions about um, the craziness that's about to happen that will surprise us all. So, 
Uh, what do you got yeah, for hopefully us? Hopefully, uh, it truly is just entertainment and not actual uh, major events that we have to uh, deal with again. Yeah, that's oh, a good Doug, point. tuning in again. 